In this short video in my series on analyzing multivariate data with Primer and Permanova, I'm going to look at working with the biological data. See the first video in the series for a full introduction to the scenario, but in brief, I've got eight sample sites, four in water about 50 meters deep, four in water about 70 meters deep. Two of these sites are directly to the south of oil platforms, which are putting pollution into the environment that is getting incorporated into the sediments. And then there are control sites out to the side, two sites immediately downstream of the source of pollution and two more controls to the east and west of those. The data are provided by a simulation which generates a set of environmental and biological variables. Now I've imported the environmental variables and biological variables into Primer and in this video I'll look at working with the environmental variables. Um, you can see that the variables here are abundances of a set of different species of marine crustacean, mollusk and worm. And there's about 30 species there in total. Now I've already taken the square root of the abundances to reduce the importance of the very abundant species and take the less common species into account. And then I've calculated the resemblance matrix using the bray curtis similarity index. And what we want to do first is just to do an ordination of these data so that we can start to look at the patterns and see what influences might be happening. So up to analyze. The standard procedure here is MDS, non-metric multidimensional scaling, and we can just hit OK. Now I'll just slightly alter the, the plot here, um, leave the, that alone, but I'll change these symbols down here to ones that classify by zone and location. The pink symbols are the ones for samples which are downstream of the platforms, the blue symbols are for the ones off to the side, and the closed symbols for the northern and the open symbols for the southern. And you can see there's very clear separation here. These are all of the samples that are immediately to the south of the platform, and these are basically all the rest. So these are separating out quite clearly from the control samples and also from the samples that are some distance downstream from the site of pollution. And we've also got some separation between north and west platforms. So those are all the west and those are all the east platform. The, um, the stress value up here is 0 0.01. That's considerably less than 0.2. So this is a good representation of the patterns in the data. And we're not going to get anything much from the 3D plot. So I typically just get rid of it. An alternate procedure to MDS is PCO. Now MDS is just based on the rank order of the similarities. So the similarities in this matrix here are essentially replaced by a series of ranks. The samples that are closely, close together are given one, the next two, and so on. On the Permanova menu, we've got PCO at principal coordinate ordination. And we can do, do this using any resemblance matrix. It doesn't work on the ranks. It takes the actual distances or similarities themselves into account. So let's hit OK. And again, I'll put some symbols on here. We actually get a fairly similar pattern. Um, an advantage of the PCO is we get an indication of how much of the variation that's being explained by the ordination, in particular by axis 1 and axis 2. With the MDS, we really lack that uh, clear information. We've got the stress, which tells us something about how good or bad the representation is, but we've got little more idea than that. Now we can see here that PCO1 explains about 96% of the variation in the data. And that's basically across the diagram this way. So that's huge. 
and much larger than you're likely to see in normal situations. PCO2 explains 3%, so that's basically going up and down the diagram this way. And together those two explain about 99% of the data. So um, there's very little unexplained variation in this particular set of data. Now to get a better idea of what exactly might be driving these differences, we can right click on the diagram here, go to special, and unfortunately this doesn't fit uh, in my, on my screen um, completely, but we can see the important points. I want to put on vectors with worksheet variables, and I want to use the environmental data, the normalized environmental data. And I'll just hit OK. So what's happening here is that Permanova and Prima are calculating the correlation between the patterns we see here, between the axes, and the underlying environmental variables, and putting those on the diagram. So basically we've got hydrocarbons increasing in this direction going this way. So basically the samples up here have high levels of hydrocarbon, particularly these ones, and the samples over here have low levels of hydrocarbons. And then nutrients and sediment and depth vary this way, and nutrients in the opposite direction to sediment and depth. So samples are pretty much separating uh, across or left to right in terms of hydrocarbon and top to bottom in terms of nutrients, sediments and depth. And we can also put those vectors on the MDS in exactly the same way. So again I'll select environmental normal, hit OK. Um, and this is giving a slightly different pattern as you can see in that hydrocarbons are going this way, sediments and depths too, and nutrients are heading off in this direction. If I flip it, you'll see it, it's rather more similar to the PCO. The differences here are going to be because the MDS is just working with the ranks, whereas the PCO is working with the actual numerical data itself. Now what we're doing here is just looking at patterns and interpreting the results we see. If we want to actually test hypotheses, then we need to go and do permanover. And first we'll need to create a permanover design. It's going to have two factors. First factor is going to be zone, north or south, and the second one is going to be location, which are my four locations east to west across. Go back to the resemblance matrix, Permanova, run the Permanova. Make sure we've got our design mate, uh, correct design worksheet selected. OK, and we'll get a print out of results here. Top part is just summarizing what's going on. And then the actual tests of hypotheses are in the table here. And we've got tests for differences between zones, north and south, a test for differences among locations as we go across east to west and a test for the interactive effect. All three probabilities are less than 0 0.05, so all three tests are significant. And the perm in here, and the unique perms over here, indicates that with permanova, the probabilities are generated by permutation or randomization of the data, not by reference to a statistical distribution such as the F distribution. Now, what does the interaction here effect. The zone tells us that there's difference between north and south in terms of the biological assemblages, the community composition, and the location effect tells us that at least one of those locations differs from the others in terms of its community composition. The interactive effect tells us that something more complicated is going on, and basically the type of community we have depends on the zone and the location. And the reason for that is evident in both the MDS and the PCO. If we look here, we've got the all of the um, northern, east and west samples are up here. All of the others basically are down here. So there's very little difference between all of the other samples and those differ 
significantly from both the north west and northern east samples. Putting it a different way, northwest and northeast differ from the, the controls to the north, but that sort of large difference is not evident between the impact and controls to the south. If you've watched the video on the environmental data, you'll see a similar sort of outcome there, though less dramatic than here. If the permanover turns up results that are not easy to interpret in terms of the MDS or PCO, there is one alternative ordination procedure and that is CAP. And we can look for differences between zones, locations or the interaction. So we'll run that one here. And basically what this is doing here is trying to ordinate the samples taking into account the structure in the data. So again, the impact locations separate out from, uh, sorry, the north impact locations separate out from all of the others. And the cap is a bit better at separating out the other locations. And so they come out basically as a string where the southern samples are up here and they're separating out from the northern controls down there. Um, but the impact and controls in the southern are rather more mixed up together, though they're breaking down distinctly by site. So I'm suggesting that difference up there is again going to be largely due to depth, whereas the difference between these and these is largely due to levels of hydrocarbons. Uh, and we cannot um, put the vectors on that on this diagram. Okay, so what I've done there is to run through the kinds of analyses and ordinations we can do with a set of biological variables. In another video, I'm gonna look at how we can relate or look at correlations and relationships between the biological and environmental, because here I'm largely just focusing on the biolo biology on its own.